Welcome to Creativity in Focus, a weekly podcast where we talk about art and we play with art. Today, I'm introducing you to a new format, but don't forget to watch every single episode on Roku, on our Mondo Makers Network, or in any podcast platform. I'm Shahar Boy. I am going to be your host today, and I start by interviewing Lisa Nevo. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Very good. Thank you. So, Lisa, I know you were a published author, right? You're an award-winning yes. artist, and yes. you've been creating art for about 37 years. Yes. Uh, you are in an in a art gallery in Italy, is that correct? I am. So I'm really excited to know more about you. Let me know first how you got started at this. What, what, what intrigued you about art? Um, I am a self-taught artist. Nice. And I, I started out as a window painter, actually. <laughs> yes. Tell I was, me about that. Well, I was 17 and uh -huh. I had moved out on my own. You know, it just was one of those kids. I call myself a street rat. <laughs> um, and I decided I was going to go around with a business card that I made called the world's best artist. Uh. And I went from business to business and I handed out my business cards and I started getting work. And how did that work at the end? Did you paint a lot of windows? I ended up having one of the largest window painting companies in all of California. Really? Yes. That's so cool. 17. I started at 17, yes. So do you think you were an artist first or an entrepreneur first? Um, uh, I was an artist first, yes, because I was painting with the contents of my diaper. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble for scribbling, but then my father, I took a, I took a paper route when I was 12, and uh -huh. my, my father is an entrepreneur, so oh, he nice. taught me how to balance the books. So at 17, you said, I need some cash. What am I good at? I'm good at painting. It started, and that's how it started. It started in high school. Wow. Yeah. And after that, what happened? Um, I just had to move out on my own. I just was had to take care of myself, and I just made that business card. And Chief Auto Parts, it was an auto parts chain, saw me painting a, a sandwich on a deli window, and he came up and he said, hey, can you do 13 stores? Mm -hmm. And masking tape and a rolling brush, and I, yes, anything, I'll do anything. And I just kind of always showed up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was consistent, I was disciplined, I was reliable. Oh, wait a minute. Yep. This is not consistent with being an artist, is this? You're reliable, you're consistent, mm -hmm. you, you don't flake out. Right. Yes. So, so when did you figure that your creativity could live just fine with you being consistent and responsible, uh, it was, showing up for the job? Yeah, it was the window painting, because they would tell me, we're so happy you showed up. You know, <sighs> this other guy, you know, we Never keep scheduling, came. he doesn't show up, he's not, when he does, he's kind of, he doesn't listen. And, you know, my whole thing is... <laughs> It's one thing to be an artist, but you also have to be like responsible. You have to be personally accountable for yourself. And, and when you can do that and apply that into the art, well, you'll soar because there's so many people that use the excuse of being an artist to party. And that's not what being an artist actually is. It's hard to work too, right? Yes, because it there is. is the learning and discovery that you put into that every single day. Absolutely. And from there, so you painted for a while mm -hmm. and then I want I want to go all the way mm -hmm. to the gallery in Italy, right? So <laughs> what, how, how, how was that? You were painting windows in California <laughs> for Delis, uh -huh. and, and now you're in it. How did that happen? Um, gosh, how did that happen? I ended up getting pregnant. I was married, and I decided that painting windows was no longer an option. Um, and I wanted to be able to get into licensing and illustration, and I saw some artwork in the mall, and I thought, I can do that, you know. <laughs> and um, I, I started drawing, and I got into the fantasy industry, so oh. I started drawing fairies. Ah. And I ended up drawing so many fairies that I was taken seriously enough to be considered viable for a book and was published by Random House. Oh, really? Yes. With the fairies? With the fairies. And again, oh. the discipline. It was the discipline because when I showed up, when the book deal came in, it was a year early, but the book deal got sold uh -huh. and, and the next, then Random House bought it and okay. they looked at the artwork and they're like, this isn't what we want. We want what's on your website. Uh -huh. And I had three weeks to, to come everything. up with 33 pages to save the deal. Wow. And so every single day for three weeks, I painted 33 fairies and I, I <laughs> lot of, lots of stress locked there. it in. Now yep. you mentioned the word licensing. Yes. Tell me, tell me what interested you there, because I know there is a huge pot potential for artists there, but not many explore that route. So, what, what, what does licensing do? Yes, or? and what interested you? Why, why did you want to go that route? I'm interested in licensing. Licensing is the thing um, that makes it so you have residual income. Mm -hmm. 
If you like to draw characters and you like to draw illustrations, you can go through other companies and they will put your artwork on all kinds of things. And then they, they give you poquito <laughs> royalties. <laughs> but it really can spread your name out there if you can get in. Uh -huh. um, but really, I mean, in this day and age, because of websites that are online like Redbubble and that, you can draw your own thing and then you can put it on Redbubble and you can market yourself and you can make a you whole know, line of products if yes, you want. Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, I've got everything, right, even still, like pants, pillows, whatever. You know, uh -huh. I don't even pay attention to it anymore because I'm, I'm so busy doing my thing. And it's still money. Yeah. It still comes in. And, and don't forget that I, I have this philosophy. You, have, you make one effort and you have multiple results. That's right. So you create one character That's right. in your sketchbook and that can become all kinds of products out there. Absolutely. Giving you the residual. That's, that's yes. okay. So you went from the deli to a published book uh -huh. and then... And then I decided that I wanted to be taken more seriously as an artist because the fantasy industry will not put you in a gallery. But it has a tendency to push you down the road of licensing. Mm. And so I met a man in Denver who was a really, really prolific painter, but also a great art dealer and asked him to mentor me. And he brought me into his art studio and in doing so, he stretched me and pulled me into abstract painting. He taught me, you know, kind of how to paint nothing for no reason. Uh, it was actually probably the best experience as far as getting a teacher that I'd ever had. I highly recommend finding somebody that you respect in your area and, w and asking them if they would be willing to mentor you. And nine out of ten times, if you, if you really want it and they can see it and you're sincere and you're a hard worker, many, many of the, the artists will actually mentor mm -hmm. because we really believe in bringing up the next, the next generation. We want you to succeed and, and we want people to understand they are creative and they can express that that's right now what you said for me is really really crucial for people to to hear that finding the mentor mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh it's really important and like like you said somebody that you admire and that mm -hmm. you respect that's right that they are going to show you the way they do it mm -hmm. and you get grab the pieces that you want to incorporate yeah and That's it wasn't crucial, and right? it wasn't free I mean right. I gave something back I right. moved into his studio and I paid studio space and I I invested in myself mm -hmm. and that's the other thing is investing in yourself if you look around for everything that's going to be free for yourself then you're telling yourself that you're not worth spending money on and the minute you tell yourself that that's when you tell yourself your art has no value so always remember that if you were doing anything else mm -hmm. If you were doing anything else, you would invest in it. Yes. Invest in your art. Invest. It's in yourself. worth it. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Now, so that was the beginning of, of you. Mm -hmm. So do you paint, is it acrylic? I do, do I use? do. I paint, um, this actually is, I paint on wood. Oh. I, yes. Okay. And I follow the grain of the wood. Uh -huh. And I paint in acrylic and I use brush, acrylic, and knife. Wow, cool. Yeah. So you were telling me before mm -hmm. the interview that actually this two, they represent very different moments in your life. Correct, yes. Right? Tell us a little bit about this transition and how do you see that transi transition? Because I see two paintings and I say, oh, cool, she paints this way and she paints that way. Right. But for you, it, it, it means a change in how you see art, right? Absolutely. So tell me a little bit. So about this that. was Park City. This is before I went to Italy. Okay. I got it. I, I was actually called to Italy. I did not decide to go to Italy. Uh -huh. um, but this was me painting Park City. It felt like Park City in the fall. I was kind of marketing towards the Park City people. Mm -hmm. And then I got a call to Italy. So I put this down. I went to Italy and I picked up this book. Tell me. This book I took with me because I wasn't able to. It's interesting. I don't know if you can see this. But it turned out to be show, show you know, to this camera here and show to this camera. Yeah. yeah. So Tell you can see it. like this one right here, I wrote poetry in it and I just practiced using my watercolors and pens. Oh. But I would follow, you know, inspiration from photographs that I took when I was in Italy. Um, I recommend anybody carrying a sketchbook around with them if they're a serious artist. You, you know, know, this this has been a topic that has been in front of me all the time right now. Mm -hmm. That we should all have this sketchbook, even if you're not, like I, I don't do much drawing, but just capturing the moment, the feeling, the mm -hmm. sensation into yes. something. So yes. that started inspiring that you? Is, yeah, I, I brought that and then in working in small detail and doing all these circles and squares and all these things, when I came back, I kind of tried to land it back onto the wood. And so you can see there's quite a, there's a difference. There's not, but there is. This is the color palette of my experience in Rome and Florence. 
And then this is, there's a lot of marble, a lot of um, stone. Okay. And so there's a lot of these colors, these creamy colors. And then there's, I am a big fan of Klimt. Uh -huh. And Klimt worked with a lot of different patterning. And he works, you know, he worked with a lot of like different shapes. And I tried to incorporate, you know, my inspiration from Klimt and see what would happen if I modernized it and brought it into. And, and people understood this because you have been compared not only to Clint, but to Kandinsky and mm -hmm. Dolly mm -hmm. multiple times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think it's because of this vision that you have for your art? I think it's because I'm actually a, an art history buff. Really? And I, I love studying the, art, the artists from the past because their style, their reasons for why they did what they did, how they landed there has nothing really to do with art. Mm. It has everything to do with who they were as a person and their style, but because I had studied it and I started diving into it, it felt possible for me. And I think that's the other thing is if you really get to know the artists, if you learn the history of artists, they have a, they have a story. They have a story and their story has so much to do with the movements and the changes that are going on in their time. And many of them were involved yes. into the changes and the resistance, Big. right? That, absolutely. Yeah. They played huge, huge roles in drawing attention and creating movements. And the entire, a little bit about Klimt. Klimt left all the institutions and he started a, a group called the Successionists. And he actually brought in everybody instead of art being with by artists he brought in the the iron workers and the ceramicists and the sculptors and everybody under one roof and called all of it art and that for the first time that's what really brought all everything together as living art so that the whole cities would start rising up and being redesigned in vienna and over in france that, that whole art nouveau movement came from stepping away from what everybody's telling them what's cool and telling what to do. He was an individual. He did his own thing. A lot of times he was by himself. He didn't care if he fit in. He didn't want to fit in. Neither did, you know what? Neither did Frida. Uh -huh. She Frida didn't want to yes. fit in. Uh -huh. Neither did Monet. He yes. actually walked, he started the Impressionists and walked away from the Impressionists. That's when he became successful. So if you are thinking about well, I can't do it because I don't fit into the galleries. I don't, don't think about that. That has nothing to do with the value of who you are as an artist. Great. That is a construct. Many of us are outsiders and that's totally fine. That's right. But I do want you to develop more on this because mm -hmm. two things, when we talk about art history, uh, many times I, I heard that before. Well, that style is not pertinent to today, That's but right. it's just like you said, it's not about that, No, right? It's what they represent That's and right. the impact that they left in the world, oh, even yeah. beside their art. Oh yeah. But this other thing, I mean, we, I grew up in a generation that your parents would want you to be anything but an artist, oh, right? Yeah. You usually would be, you're either a doctor or a lawyer who worked in That's the right. bank for 20 years, That's right? right. That, that's the perfect life. That's right. So if you uh, deviate from that, you would be the black sheep in the family. Correct. Uh, and we tend to think we are not good enough. We are isolated. They don't give value. And yes. I know you have something to say about that. About the value of the artist? Yes. The value of the artist, in my opinion, has been removed because we are the independent thinkers. We are the critical thinkers. We are the innovators and we are the visionaries. So if you feel that you have no value, uh, value as an artist, it's because that's by design. That's by design. Think about in the beginning of time when, when man was making pottery, it was to hold the olive oil that was hand pressed. That was the artist, that was a crafter, okay? Making the clothes, weaving. All of the things that we did by hand, by love, has all been replaced by all of the machines. So for us to go around believing that we have no value, we were the ones that created all of the things that humankind used to live by. But more than that, that is how the revolution started because we don't think like everybody else. We pull something from nothing. Can I tell you a story about Disney? Of Would you like to hear it? I love Disney. Okay. Huge student. <laughs> okay. So Disney, I have a friend who is really close friends with Imagineers from Disney. He knows the guy that designed the Harry Potter thing mm -hmm. that ended up at Universal. And what they do with Disney is they bring in the Imagineers and they tell them to start in a circle brainstorming about everything that is not possible. 
That's how they begin. Now think about, these are the creators. Think about something that's impossible, and they throw impossible ideas all over until something pops that becomes possible. What is that? That's pulling something from nothing and creating, and the next thing you've got is everything that you see that Disney does. Mm -hmm. But that's artists, that's what we do, and we are so necessary right now. We need to come together. We need to understand our value, because in the times that we're in right now, we have to have the vision. We hold the vision. We create from our visions. The creators, we're the creators. They've taken that from us, and now we're all standing around believing the clickbait that we see on the internet, right? And disagreeing of things that we should not even be disagreeing on. Oh yeah, they've got us very distracted. Yeah. And, and with this, they think about how many things the Imagineers brought, uh, like mm -hmm. animatronics and all the, the advancement that we made in technology because of that question, right? Absolutely. What's not possible and what's, what's possible. And it's the Phenomenal. creative people, it's the artists. Yeah, it is, it's, yeah. Yes. Now, Let's talk about your art. Oh, and okay. I usually ask people what inspires you, and I can see all these things inspire you. Mm -hmm. But when you're creating a piece, tell me a little bit about the process. Uh, how do you get inspired, and how do you get to Italy or Park City? Um, how do I get to Italy yeah. or Park City? <laughs> I actually have learned how to monetize my coping mechanism. It's the thing I do all the time to make myself feel good. I have anxiety. I'm struggling right now. Everybody I know that's yeah. creative is struggling. And so all of us are starting to turn inward and we're turning to our creative process because it makes us feel better. It releases dopamine. I mean, that's what this is all about. So if you're doing something already, that, that's what inspires me. How did I get to Italy? It, I, by locking myself away in my house in the middle of freaking COVID and the only thing I have is my art, waking up, making coffee, sitting there in my robe, not brushing my teeth and painting and painting and painting because <laughs> it makes me feel better. Uh -huh. Which is also, by the way, how Van Gogh ended up the yeah. way he is. And also Monet. Do you know that Monet was almost blind? When, no. he, when he finished his last piece when he was in his early 80s, it took him four years and he, was, he had 7% of his sight. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to stop because he knew it would be his last piece, but he could only see to hear and he still painted and painted and painted because that's what he was made of. That's what inspires me. It's who I am. Mm -hmm. I, I've been doing it my whole life. It's, I know that no matter what happens for me in my world, my art is always here for me. It's my discipline and it's my willingness to put myself out there. And it's the fact that I haven't driven my car off a cliff. <laughs> right, that's a good thing, or else I wouldn't be interviewing you. Right? But what you said, not, do, do not see as, uh, the obstacles right, mm -hmm. to stop you. Like you said with Monet, Beethoven is another example. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is, because you know, your, your joints may hurt, oh, your back sure. may hurt, but that sure. cannot stop you from creating. Nothing right? can, you should not be stoppable. You mm -hmm. need to be a really like an ox in this. And when it comes to the arts, you, and, and it, it'll make you feel better. Like I have my arm because I paint all the time. So my arm hurts and so does my lower back. But what hurts more is if I go for too long without creating. Mm -hmm, exactly. and my inspiration for painting on the wood comes from the fires. It's from seeing all of the trees burning and trying to get people's attention. I give back a portion of all that I sell to the Arbor Foundation and we replant trees. Beautiful. So, you know, my goal is to say, you know, let's make this about something. Let's use our, our creative voices in a way that actually brings back to life the, the truth and depth and soul of humanity, that's, we're the reflection of that. Mm -hmm. And we're so needed right now, we're so necessary. That's but true. Don't ever let anybody tell you not to be an artist. There is a lot to be said everywhere you look, everything you see, every design that's around, even the chair that I'm sitting on, even the shirt there's that you're wearing, it. there's yeah. an artist behind yeah. it. And we see things different. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at another piece that you created mm -hmm. and I want you to talk a little bit about that. Okay. I'm going, you're going to see that in a minute. Okay. <laughs> oh yes, this piece. So when I was in Italy, I saw um, so much texture. Everywhere I went, it was shapes, whether it was on the ground, whether it was on the walls, if it was in the ceilings, they just never stopped. And I started seeing everything in pattern. Hmm. Like by the, I was there for a month and I, I couldn't read and I couldn't speak Italian. So everything came through a visual for me. And all I began seeing, it was like the matrix. Everything was made out of different patterns and uh -huh. shapes. So when I got home, I couldn't help but every night because I'd been doing it, I had to keep going. That's what this book was. I just, I, okay. I actually had to wind down <laughs> from doing all of that. Uh -huh. that was Very pretty. Thanks. Let's see one more. Okay. 
This one was a piece that I had done quite a while ago and I was trying to incorporate my older style and then bring in my newer style and make it even more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but you can kind of see my Dolly influence. When I was out there, I actually saw um, a museum that had, it was all Dolly pieces that were not pieces that we normally get to see. Oh, nice. Um, so I was heavily influenced by the way he liked to stretch mm -hmm. things. Do you know how he managed stretching things is he had a lot of wax that he would mold into shapes in his place uh -huh. and it would melt because it would get hot. <laughs> and so he started painting the melting of the, the melting. things See? that he had created in uh -huh. order to, to paint cool. it. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. And the last one, let's see. Oh, that's this piece. So this particular- Oh, that's the same one. It is the same uh -huh. one, yeah. Oh, this particular piece, again, it represents the water. Um, it feels like Pietra Santa. And I went to Pietra Santa. It's where Michelangelo and all the other sculptors would go to get their marble. Uh -huh. And so I had to go to Pietra Santa. And an interesting story about that place is I was so used to the extravagance of Rome and Florence that I walked and walked and walked miles looking for that same extravagance. And I was literally one block away from the sea. Oh. And I didn't go to the sea. It huh. took me a hot second. I actually decided I needed water. I'd gone for two miles and I went in to, to get some water and I could see the sea. And all this time I've been looking for all this extravagance. Like, goodness, I, I, I walked all the way out and they had a chair out there and I fell asleep, I slept. Yeah. But I just think that it's interesting how when you're looking for something, if you're not careful, if you're not looking at what's right in front of you, you, you will see. overlook yeah. what's, what, you That's know what interesting. I mean? That's very interesting. Don't, if we're always seeking and we're not seeing what we have, uh -huh. you know, the thing with artists, we're visionaries, so we're always seeking you know, remember to be present and to be still and to look around with what you have right now. And even if you're, you know, in a darker place or a not darker place, you have your art. And that's something that not everyone else has. So use that and, and love on that. And before we go, I have a really quick story about sure. the ego and the muse. Uh -huh. So I have a story when I teach about the ego and the muse. And here is the muse. The muse is in this big, beautiful room throwing paint, dancing, spinning, loving, all of this. And then in walks ego, looking around, making a decision, thinking about it and saying, you know what? I don't know if that's right. And I'm pretty sure that's not right. And I don't know if I like the way you're moving. And I don't know about that. And the muse stops and turns and looks at ego, really? Fine, then you do it and walks out the door. So next time ego walks in when you're creating Remember, the ego probably belongs somewhere in the theater department in the back of your head, uh, up there playing with the costumes, lock the door, and send them packing because your ego and your muse, don't let your ego control what drives you and what moves you. It's, it's not about doing it right. It's about doing it. Beautiful, beautiful. I know people don't want the conversation to stop. So how do they get to know more about you? Do you have a website, social media? Tell us about it. Yeah, you can find me at Lisa Nevo, L-I-S-A-N-E-V-O-T, on my Facebook is my most popular because I blog a lot and I chat with people. Um, if you're interested in anything else, you can go to my website at www.lisanevo.com and you can find my artwork and my paint and sip fun and, and all the fun things I do there. That's very good. I, I bet they are going to, to go and check. And I want you here very soon. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much for him. You were, you were an inspiration, not only with your art, but you know, the depthness of the why that you're doing this. The why matters. And I think we need to translate that more and more and more to people. Yes. So come back very, very soon. Okay. I'm going to leave you for a minute, but that's not the end for Lisa because she has a message for you that we were going to show you in a second. Thank you so much. Okay. And now I'm going to introduce you to my amazing friend, Fuse Glass artist, Jody McCraney Resho. How you doing? I'm doing well, but I'm here in my alternate ego. I know, I was going to ask. So I know you because you have a, a Fuse Glass studio in town. Yes, I and do. Yeah, we, we had many, 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 many interactions, right? Yes, indeed. But now I'm seeing cupcakes here. What, I know, what right? is this? Lisa? Cupcakes. So I'm here as the recycling queen. Wow, yes. And yes, there's somebody indeed. better than she. It's my alternate passion. Yes. So this is my superhero. <laughs> my day job is being a glass artist. My secret identity is being a recycling. Yes, hero. And, and when we were talking about this new format for the show, uh, you, everybody that knows you 
knows you, you love a thrift shop, <laughs> oh, yes. right? But, but we wanted to convey not only recycling, right. but the importance of turning something that you could see as trash mm -hmm. into something artistic. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the reasons behind that is that, I don't know if you are aware of that, but there are many associations out there in the world that they, that's actually how they empower people. Uh -huh. They get trash, and uh, even trash from the landfill mm -hmm. and teach people how to turn that into art and by doing that they change their lives yes so what we are going to be showing here i know it's not a complicated project no but, it's but it can really be a very important <laughs> one right so <laughs> what are we going to be learning today well so what i wanted to talk about today is this idea of making um environmentally friendly and recyclable mm -hmm. cupcake toppers Ooh. which seems kind of silly but it's pretty cool. And so I was going to, I would like to show you how to make your own design. And then we'll make some, I'll show you some examples we have here. Uh, we have a little heart topper and a little angel. And these are made out Ooh, of aluminum cans. Uh -huh. And then we have- The soda cans that we throw in the ocean. <laughs> right? Well, and for- To disturb our friends. Right, and, and aluminum is, totally recyclable. So the really cool thing about this is after the holiday or after the party or whatever, you just make sure these little guys are clean and you can still recycle them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a balloon that goes on to cause ecological problems. This, we're just borrowing it from the recycling stream for a minute and then we're going to let it continue yeah, on its to. way. Mm -hmm. But this way we can celebrate without causing environmental damage right like mm -hmm. we're, we're yes so we're finding we're being not to responsible yes. to ways to do that and then we have over here we have a little heart this one is made out of a styrofoam takeout container mm. and this one is made out of a, a compostable takeout container so these are our containers that would normally then just either the styrofoam would be thrown away because it's not recyclable currently and the takeout containers often get thrown away also. So what we're doing is we're giving that styrofoam one more use before it goes. Possibly we'll think of something else to do with it after that. But we want to prolong the life of things. So instead of it just being a single use of something, we Beautiful. want it to become Beautiful. a longer yeah, I can see these cycle. as ornaments as well. Yes, so indeed. Some, some funny table They'll, decorations sometimes, right? right? And you can write on them with dry erase markers. Uh -huh. So if you want it, we're having with a the names, party right? with the names. The fancy dinner right? where you have napkins, you can write right. the names of where people are going to sit. And cool. you can give them away and that work for ornaments. The little angels of would course, be particularly yes. good. So, do you want to learn how to make one? Of course I do. And okay. I want people to understand that not only they can be doing this for themselves, uh -huh. to, for a party or something, sure. but they can always teach other people how to do it and oh, other sure, kids sure. because and yeah, actually this is yeah this. this is great for kids because you can make these out of the clear takeout containers and while your adult is cutting these the kids can paint them with markers can color them with markers and make this great little like stained glass style ornament nice so it, it can incorporate that recycled material into a classroom situation or a family party situation i have six nieces and nephews that are under the age of nine. Ooh. And I am working really hard to maintain my most favored aunt status. And so, <laughs> so this is the kind of thing we do, right? Is we do these projects together because nice. then I'm the and then fun you create, aunt. And you create, you're the fun aunt and they are going right. to remember you forever, that nice moment, that oh, nice yeah, memory. They do, we have, so we have a lot of fun together. That's so. cool. What do we need to do it? Okay, so. I assume this is for your drinking. That is for my drinking. So I'm going to put this away from you. Okay. Need it. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. So we're, we'll be drawing our pattern on a three by five card. Okay. Um, and then we need some aluminum cans. We need some takeout containers, if that's what we're going to be using, if that's what we have. I have paper scissors. I have kitchen shears. Those are for the aluminum cans. Okay. I have a couple of markers, uh, a little knife, a pencil, and some cupcakes. Yeah, nice. I'm looking <laughs> forward to those. <laughs> right. Okay. okay. So what we're doing here is we're going to create a flat pattern that looks something like this. And then we roll it up to mm. make a three-dimensional design. And it's a pretty basic idea that is pretty versatile. So we'll start with a three by five card. And what we actually need is a three by four card. So we're just going to cut that edge off and save it for other things like bookmarks or something. So then what we want to do is find our center point. 
And we do that just by folding in half. Would you like a card of your own? Not really. Not really. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh -huh. you I'm see paying, how, I'm you see how this works. That's all I can do at the moment. <laughs> okay. So I can replicate that later. So we, we find our center point, and then we go down about a third of the card. And what we'll do is then again come in a third of the card, and this will be our, this will be our bottom edge, and it's kind of an oval shape here. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll fold it in half when we cut it. And then what we need to do is we, we draw our design. So if we're drawing an angel, we would want um, some wings here, like this. And then we need her little waist, which was a little, and then we have a head. And then this is a little halo right here. And that's all there is to it. You would think, you're, I know you're thinking, that does not look like an angel. I have no idea it what this lady but is talking about. But I was thinking, about. I can do that. I think I can do that. <laughs> right? And then we fold it in half because we want it to be symmetrical. And we just cut that out. And this will be our pattern that we'll then Ooh. go ahead and use on our, our projects. And I'll show you how this works. Are you happy that you're showing people how to recycle stuff? Oh, you know, <laughs> it's so much more fun to show people how to do something fun with recycling than to just lecture them about uh -huh. recycling. So, <laughs> and you know, I'm a problem solver. I love to do new stuff. So I'm always thinking about nice. what can I do with, and you know, I'm also thrifty. So, and then we've cut halfway through. Okay, so does it look like an angel yet? More a ballerina not. for me, but okay. Be so not pretty ballerina. Then we wrap her around. There she uh, is. Looks more like a ballerina it to looks me. Looks well. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. So then we turn her around. Ooh, look at the And we have we have two. Li yeah. Right. Huh? Ooh, Ooh. The turning <laughs> technology. <laughs> and then we just uh, we just fold those that together right there. Wow. And then you have your little angel. Aww. Now there's one more thing that you can do, and this is an optional, uh, but if you want to, you can go ahead and take your, your razor knife here and you can add some little sleeves. Mm. So they, fancy. I know, right? That's why it's optional. <laughs> fancy is optional. But, so this way, when you roll her up, that is she cute. Has. That, show that to Jessica. Look, look right. how pretty. She nice, has little beautiful. sleeves. And then, of course, you can embellish it with whatever you like. And then you just like. decide what kind of material you're going to be cutting them on, right? Yes, that is correct. But you can also use the same exact technique to do, and I'm just going to do this super quickly um, because it's, it is also very cool. And you remember we just went, uh, we just did a curve here and a here. And then we'll go ahead and just do a heart here. Cause you know, there is a holiday coming up or <laughs> there's always, there, a, holiday there's always a holiday coming up. There was a holiday that celebrates. Oh, there's one with a heart. With I a see. heart. Right, and so then we can easily just make these little guys. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, how romantic! It almost oh. it could almost be Mickey Mouse. If I had a boyfriend, <laughs> I would get some cupcakes and make some of those. That's cute. But with the okay. aluminum, I would assume it's quite hard to play. No, with let's that. let's make one. Okay. So we have we just have our shears here we of course don't want to use our nice scissors because uh, right you cut with no remorse right i'm relentless man <laughs> and i have to say i do like the water cans the best because they're not sticky inside <laughs> <laughs> and i usually cut down the the uh, barcode that's a water one mm -hmm. oh Fancy. Yeah, look, it's even still got oh, a little I bit like of water the in it. Let me get you a rag. Okay. And you could do, oh, thank you. And you could do 
the color side or the black and white mm -hmm. side, but let's do a heart, shall we? Yeah. And then what we would want to do here is try and get our marker to work. That would be nice. All right. So, but the whole point here is this is a very easy to modify design. So mm -hmm. you could do stars, you could do um, rainbows, which would be really cool because you can draw on these with permanent marker. Mm -hmm. uh, so you really have a lot of options. You could make Not these bad. as sure. party favors. And if you have nice uh, shears that cut smoothly, it's really, they're not sharp. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you wanna make sure that you get uh, a set of scissors that cuts smooth and doesn't give you a serrated edge. You know, you cannot take lightly the, uh, the soda can because I have a friend here in town that he actually creates sculptures mm -hmm. out of soda can, and he makes the most adorable dragon out oh. of them. Yeah, big pieces. He, cool. He sometimes he, he does as a hobby, uh -huh. but sometimes he's at the youth fair, state fair, and things like that. So there are many things you can do with those cans. There, are, Yes, there are. And they're really pretty easy to work with and also really available. So, you know, you oh. are, you're all set here. So the secret here is having this uh, semi-circle design. Yes. Because that's what's hold, that holds the cupcake. And then you can do stars, whatever you want. Yes, that is oh. correct. So we have our heart. <laughs> cute. Ta -da. Yes, very cute. So there's a couple of things we can do here. I'm becoming my yourself. art. No. <laughs> So you can use your pencil and this aluminum is thin enough that you can then just come in here oh, emboss. and you can do a little bit of embossing, oh, right? Oh, fancy. And so you can uh, put names on, you can use your permanent marker if you want. Okay. And then when you roll it up, and we tuck those cut ends under. So make sure that you, tuck so you have up. a nice clean back. See mm -hmm. that? And then you can, Very. right? And uh -huh. do you see, it says, uh -huh. it says Shahar. Shahar. Oh, if Shahar, so then put some stars Oh, here. right, then we have to put we, some we fancies. Gotta, we, we have to have a <laughs> bling. We gotta have we, a bling. We, we got a bling. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Right, that's fair. Very oh, this cool. one isn't sticky, hun. Oh. I don't know what you brought. Right? <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, like it's fault. my fault. Here. There we go. Oh, that one is sticky. Okay. Oh, I look so much prettier. You now. look oh, so look at that. pretty. And the cupcake. Da 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 da. Ta -da. Look how cute. And then a cupcake. Look how cute. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right. Very cool. That's and a very cool idea. The nice thing is you can recycle it when you're finished with it. Yeah, as it's just a fun project, quick project, yeah. right? But as everything we do, Jody, because we do many things together, <laughs> I think it is, uh, well, it's the fact that people tend to separate crafts and arts all the time, right? Like yeah. art is so important and crafts not important at right. all. When really there's no separation, as long as you're creating and expressing right. yourself, that's fun. Having playtime is also very important. It right? is critically important. Um, and that's actually why I'm so thrilled to be here. One of the reasons is because I do get super focused on my artwork and super focused on solving those glass problems. And I do need to be bad at something, right? I need to <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way to put I it. I need to have something that, that there is no pressure that I can just you know, make some, some terrible angels uh -huh. and, until I get one I like, but, but there's no pressure. So no yeah. pressure, I like exactly. that, that ability to play. The play, the play mm -hmm. part the that we need, part. we need to exercise that. Yes. M now more than ever, right? We need to Well, and that's the other more. thing. A lot of people, including me, are very, very stressed out. Uh, it's a weird and wild place right mm -hmm. now. And sometimes to get that creativity kick started again, all you have to do is make a cupcake topper. And then you have a good moment with right? yourself. Right. And then right? your your creativity goes, oh, right. Yes. I remember now why we do this. Yes. So, you know, this is one of those things. It's a low pressure kickstart 
but it's also environmentally friendly. Yeah, and when you are a recycler at heart, I know you are like that, and my daughter is like that mm -hmm. too. Uh, I mean, she goes crazy if I, by mistake, not on purpose, I get a cup of soda and throw in the regular trash. She'll have a fit about yeah. that, right? I and she's can't. right, she is right. <laughs> Uh, but I know that causes anxiety, right? Because it you does. want to spread to the world, guys, we need to be recycling right. our turtles and the fish and everything uh, else. Right. So, so do take a step ahead of this and think how in your circle, you have, like you said, you have nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. uh, you may go to a church. You may attend a club that has uh, people there, seniors, kids, doesn't matter their age. And you teach them how to make this simple, quick project, right? Mm -hmm. and, and many times you never know the power of the network behind you. You, know, you never know who you know. And there, there will be that one person that is involved in an association, maybe here, maybe in another country, uh, where kids learn how to become mm -hmm. resourceful. And this can be the beginning of something very big it, right so don't take can. lightly the simple projects no. they're extremely important and I still have uh, because I've been doing this for so very long for glass for so very long but I, st I will still have uh, people who meet me and say oh, when I was six you gave me a piece of sea glass at a show and I still See? have it and and even that that thing that was so insignificant to me that I put it out for free meant a lot. Meant a lot. Yes. We never know yeah. the impact we are causing. Right. So congratulations on this. And if you don't know Jody McCraney Russell, like I said at the beginning, <laughs> she's a fused out glass artist. But look, look, what, what but kind of glass do you use? Recycled glass. Yes. I only I fuse window glass, discarded window glass, and bottle glass, and some other vintagey kind of things that I find. Found but everybody glass, but it's all found. dumps the bottles at your house, correct? Yes, they <laughs> do. she makes the most amazing <laughs> art, right? If yeah. you want to know more about her, Jody actually teaches her art I at CuriousMondo.com. So go check it I out. Do. You have a ton of courses there, right? I do. I do, I do. Yeah, so we are going to Making learn. Making everything make you could possibly imagine. Yes. And, yes. I, and I just keep wondering, because you have that investigative mind that is always looking for the science behind things. <laughs> and then you make cupcake <laughs> hearts <laughs> out of cats, right? So your, your life is really interesting, let me tell you. Do you want me to tell you what our next project yes, is? Yes, next okay. week, what do we do So next week we're going to make, um, we're going to have five projects that you can make with worn out socks. Socks. I have a lot of worn out socks. There. <laughs> right. A lot yep. of that. So they, we're going so to talk I about. I have only one uh, machine to, to wash the clothes and somehow they always come in well, singles. Well, okay. So the first thing you need to do is get over this idea that socks have to match. They don't. They no. don't. I, I, I never had that idea. <laughs> right. uh, if you know My me. My life was so much less stressful <laughs> when I gave up on the matching of socks. It just, or, or, or shoes, by or that sh matter. Yeah, that too. You know that, that I had this episode that I went to a car dealership for a fight. I was there to fight. And I was actually yelling at the manager. And he was yelling back at me. And then I suddenly looked down for a second. And I had two totally different shoes. <laughs> they were not just the same model in different colors. They were totally different <laughs> shoes. <laughs> oh, that put a dent in my self-confidence. <laughs> my husband does it on purpose. Oh, really? Yes, nice. he always has two different color of shoes on. Yeah, why not? I can find him in a crowd. No problem. Good. Uh, that's right. How, I, I love creatives. I love. So, Jody, thank you very much for being here today. Thanks I'm for excited for me. next week. Yes, it's indeed. going to be fun. And don't take the cupcakes away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm starting to see why I was invited here. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all about the cupcakes. It's all about the cupcakes. So we asked some people. What is art? Because there are different definitions for that, and we don't want to know what's in the dictionary. We want to know in depth, what, who are we as creatives? What is art? And Lisa Neveau has a message for you. So what is art? Art has been here since the beginning of man. Art is the original voice, and in my opinion, is the scribe of God. Before we spoke languages, that everyone understood. And before we wrote with writing, there was artwork on the walls. There was artwork in the caves. There was pottery to hold the wine and the water. We have been around as artists for as long as mankind has existed. If you are an artist, think this. Governments have come and gone. 
religions have come and gone. Statesmen, wealthy people, ideas have all come and gone. But to this day, to this day, the art still stands. If you're a creative person right now in these times, your voice, <clears throat> excuse me, is part of the new renaissance. You are here for a reason. Everything that you're thinking and feeling needs to be recorded and put down for the history of our future. And just know that your, your purpose has always been to be the recorder, to be the one that brings the beauty, to be the one that reflects the great exhale when words lose their meaning. Please always remember that art, above all things, has been here longer and carries the most value. It's Nick Keenitz here, and I'm coming to you today with a new tutorial on how to create your own scratch paper for scratch paper art. This is actually a really fun project that anybody can do. Uh, you can get the grandkids involved, your kids, the whole family can join in and g get together on this project. It's really fun, really simple, uh, but it can produce really things. Uh, so let's jump into what you'll need to get started on this project. Uh, obviously, the first thing that you're going to need is some paper. But you do want to make sure that you're not just using normal printer paper for this. What I'm using is actually uh, sketch paper. So it's a little bit heavier weight. Um, and that's what you want. You don't want paper that's too flimsy and can't withstand a little bit of moisture and because it will fall apart. Uh, you want something that will be able to withstand the moisture. So watercolor paper will be a good option for this. Uh, this kind of sketch paper will be a good option. Smoother surface will be an easier project and gives you a better finish. Is that what I'm going for? It'll give you a better finish in the overall if you have a smooth paper to begin with. Uh, so that's the kind of paper you'll want to use. We're also going to be using uh, crayons for this, but you have a couple options. You can actually do this with either oil pastels or crayons. Um, I just went, go, went with the crayons because they're cheap and affordable and you can basically get them anywhere. Uh, and the last thing that you absolutely will need is spray paint. You can do this kind of uh, scratch paper with paintable acrylic paint, but I find that the spray paint works a lot better. And here is the secret. Make sure that you get a matte black finish spray paint. Don't use the shiny. The shiny is very distracting on top of the wax and everything else, and it doesn't scratch off as nicely, in my opinion, as the matte does. So make sure that you get a matte black spray paint. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into this. Uh, the first thing that we want to talk about is coverage. When you are creating these, the trick is to cover all of the paper with the wax. You don't want any paper peeking through because what happens is when we go to spray paint the surface, if any of the paper is peeking through, it, the paint will absorb into that and it will not scratch off. So you want to make sure that you are getting a really, really good coverage of color with your crayons. And I will show you what I mean by that. So I am pressing quite hard just to make sure that I am getting all of the white gone and you're gonna get flakes that happens. Just brush them off or whatever you need to do. And then I'm gonna show you what not to do. So we have two things here. We've got the very solid color and then we have this kind of light color. You do not want this. this there's too much paper peeking through the color and your paper will absorb all of the paint. So you want this very, very solid, very solid color. What that's doing is it's actually laying down that wax layer to prevent the paint from absorbing directly into your paper. And when you're doing this, you are not limited to just doing colors. If you want to draw pictures, um, wording, script, you know, anything you want to do uh, as the color picture, go for it. I'm just doing very simple shapes today just for demonstration. Uh, this is what I have quickly colored uh, that we're going to be turning into our scratch paper. But you can tell I have good coverage, no white peeking through. That's what you want. That is ideal. Okay? So that's pretty much all that we need to know, actually, for this. Okay? So then, once you have your paper covered, like I do here, I always recommend that people leave about a half an inch of a border 
every side in case the paint seeps in through the back and absorbs into the paper on the other side. So I like to keep that in mind when I'm spraying this, um, that maybe a half an inch of the border of the paper might not be good. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. It's not always a necessity. Sometimes the spraying goes perfectly and you don't have any bleed and you're good to go. So once you have your paper covered in your crayon, the next thing that you wanna do is you're going to take your matte black spray paint and we are going to spray the surface of this. And and I did want to talk a little bit about that. You can do this with paintable acrylics. Uh, you do need to thin out the acrylic paint before painting the layers on. I don't do it that way because I feel like the paint actually gives us a less streaky surface to work on. With acrylic paints, you, you can really see the brush strokes a lot. With the spray paint, you really lose a lot of those brush strokes and it gives you a very nice finished surface. Okay, so again, we're just laying our paper out. Make sure you lay paper down or do this outside. Don't spray paint your counters or anything like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spray our scratch paper. Remember, we've covered all of the white on our paper with the wax to prevent the spray paint from absorbing into our paper. A couple other things, when you are going to apply the spray paint, you definitely wanna make sure that you are not spray painting it super, super close. Uh, because you can cause pooling or little uh, thicker spots to the paint. And you don't really want that. You'll have to scratch through more layers to get it. So make sure that you're keeping your can up at a good distance and you're just getting a nice, even coating across the surface. And you want to spray it until you can't see any of your original color. Ooh, I got a little heavy handed there, it's okay. It'll be all right. Okay, so this is where you wanna be. You wanna cover the paper completely. Some of the edges might curl, that's totally fine. That's bound to happen with this, unless you're using really, really thick paper. But this is where you wanna be, and now you need to move this aside and let it dry for at least a day, I would say. It dries pretty quickly, however, if you don't let it dry completely, when you go to scratch off the paint, it comes off in a long strip rather than small chunks. So it's, it actually isn't helpful to scratch it early. So once you have your paint, set this aside to dry for at least a day. So I have a sample piece here that I actually made beforehand so I could show you guys the end result of the scratch paper. Uh, as you can see here, on this part of the paper, I didn't actually cover it with wax. So you can see none of that black is really scraping off because the paint has absorbed into my paper. Here in the center of my paper is where I've actually laid the wax down. And I have let this dry so it will easily lift and it won't cause me any issues. But once it's dry, this is how your paper will look here in the middle. You'll have a nice, almost chalkboard-like surface. And I'm just taking a small stick. You can really use any kind of pointy or blunt object to use as your scratcher. At everything works but once it is dry and you go in and start scratching your paper you can see that that color is revealed from the dry spray paint I, I get so excited when I do this I don't know why it's like being a kid again but you can see that beautiful color pops through and even though people say that the crayons come out a little lighter than the oil pastels that's still pretty vivid to me and I don't even mind it uh, just remember to brush off your flakes but then you are just free to scratch whatever design you want to into your paper it is so much fun it's really a great project i actually learned this when i was a kid in art class uh, so this is a really fun thing to do with kids the whole family can get involved i really hope you guys enjoy it and i would love to see some of the creations you make with it well, I don't know, but I'm super, super, super inspired to create more. I love what Lisa had to tell us and the, her art, amazing, right? The project that Jody did is a quite fun, you know, just mind buffering kind of thing for, for you to do. And what Nick showed you can really become your next art project because you can dive into the scratch boarding. Amazing. So go create, but don't forget to join us next week for more creativity in focus. You can watch past episodes on our Roku channel, the Mondo Makers Network, or on any podcast platform. See you next time. <laughs>